Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to this IS Distinguished Lecture. Uh, my name is Hai Zhang. I'm from the Department of Mathematics. Today is my great pleasure to introduce uh, our speaker, Professor Habib Amari. So, uh, Professor Habib Amari, uh, he obtained his PhD from uh, Eco Polytech in, two, uh, in 95 uh, in applied math. So he then joined the same institute for 15 years. He was first a researcher and then a researcher of CNRS and then a director of researcher of CNRS. He then moved to Eco, uh, Eco, no, Eco Normal uh, Shiba here in Paris uh, in uh, 2010 and worked there for uh, five years. He joined uh, uh, ETH at Zurich uh, in uh, 2015. He's now a full professor in uh, applied mathematics. Uh, professor Habib Amari is a distinguished applied mathematician. Uh, he's, uh, he's a leading expert in the mathematical theory of wave propagation phenomenon uh, in complex media, uh, mathematical modeling of uh, photonics and phononics. He uh, is also an expert in uh, mathematical bioimaging and inverse problems. He's very productive. So, so far he has published more than 200 papers and uh, he has written uh, eight uh, books on various aspect, uh, aspects of uh, applied mathematics. So he received many honors. So he is an uh, uh, elected uh, member of uh, European Ac Academy of Science in two this year. He was also a Tunisian Academy of uh, Science, uh, Letter and Arts in 2015. So he, he also received uh, the uh, the Khwarezmi International Awards in Basic Science in 2015 and the the Kuwait uh, uh, Prize in Basic Science in 2006, uh, 2013. So uh, with this, so I will give time uh, to uh, Professor Habib Amari. He will talk about his recent research uh, in uh, sub wavelength resonance from super resolution to metamaterial. Thank you so much, Hai. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I will try to show you what we have been doing uh, last year uh, on this sub wavelength resonance and uh, try to explain some uh, math theory which unify all of this. So, let me start first with uh, what is the resolution. Resolution, roughly speaking, is the smallest detail that can be resolved. If you take a point source, uh, x0, and you emit a wave, then uh, uh, you measure uh, the wave far away from the point source, and uh, you want to detect uh, the source of the wave x0. What you do, you complex conjugate the green function, which is the solution to this problem. You back propagate it, and uh, you construct your imaging function. And because of this Helmholtz-Kirchhoff identity, uh, this quantity here, which, uh, which uh, complex conjugating the data, back propagating into the domain, is nothing else than the imaginary part of uh, your fundamental solution to the problem. This is the best that you can do in the L2 sense, because if you try to minimize the discrepancy between your data and what you expect, you minimize uh, g of x, y, over x for all y on the boundary, you, what you get, you get the imaginary part of the green function. If r is way uh, large, large enough. So basically, uh, when you try to image a point source, uh, you, are, uh, you are plotting the imaginary part of the green function. And this imaginary part of the green function, function is your point spread function. The more point-like, imaginary part of the green function is, the sharper is the resolution. Sounds good for you? Now, this is, uh, this is the point spread function. I represent it here. Uh, it's half width is half the wavelength. So this is the best that you can do. If you have two point sources separated by a distance which is smaller than half the wavelength, then you cannot resolve them. You will get a blurred image and you cannot resolve them. So the idea, if you want to make super resolution, is to reduce this focal spot size. This focal spot size is I plotted here. This is half the wavelength. If you reduce it by some way, uh, then you confine the waves to length scales significantly smaller than half the wavelength, and you achieve super resolution. Okay? 
We have uh, in mind applications. This is motivated by applications uh, in nanophotonics and nanophononics, uh, where people want to focus, control, manipulate, reshape, guide waves at these subwavelength scales. And what we propose is some math and numerical framework for the subwavelength wave physics, which explains quantitatively the mechanism behind the, all the spectacular properties exhibited by uh, uh, these materials. So you have to modify the medium. Otherwise, you are limited by half the wavelength. And in modifying the medium, uh, you construct these metamaterials. So how you do it? You construct these metamaterials out of subwavelength resonator. What's a subwavelength resonator? Subwavelength resonator is a resonator with wave with a resonant frequency such that that the resonant wavelength is much larger than the size of the resonator. Okay. There are three examples I will discuss. The first one is Helmholtz resonator. The second one is plasmonic nanoparticles, and the third one is mini earth bubbles. So out of the single resonators, there could be one resonator or many of them uh, uh, strongly coupled. You make a microstructure, which is a resonant microstructure. And these subwavelength resonators are the building block microstructure. Okay? You take your favorite, uh, favorite uh, subwavelength resonator here, which exhibits a resonant frequency such that the resonant wavelength is much larger than the, the, the size, the typical size of the resonator. You make it, uh, you distribute uh, these, uh, these micro, this micro resonators, and you construct microstructure which is resonant and which will be, which be used to super focus the waves beyond the resolution limit, construct negative mat material parameters to achieve invisibility, cloaking, super lensing. Construct metasurfaces, which are planar structures that locally modify the polarization, the phase, and amplitude of light or sound in reflection or, or transmission. Construct subwavelength band gap materials, which are microstructures that have periodicity smaller than the wavelength and prohibited low frequency wave propagation. And what we want and try to, 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 to explain is kind of a unifying mathematical theory of all of this, of super resolution, subwavelength, band gap materials, metamaterials, and cloaking. Okay, when you make uh, uh, when we make a structure out of this uh, subwavelength resonator, there are two regimes basically. Either you are in the dilute regime, where small volume fraction there is a small volume fraction of the subwavelength reson resonator, or uh, uh, in the non-dilute regime, where the volume fracture, uh, fraction is, uh, is of order one. Okay, close to. So in the dilute regime, uh, I will show you that effective medium theory uh, uh, applies. Uh, uh, this microstructure made out of the subwavelength resonators can be modeled by high contrast materials and slightly below the free space resonant frequency of one single uh, one single resonator or many of this one uh, or many of this uh, coupled resonator, but in single unit. Uh, uh, slightly below that resonant frequency, you can achieve super resolution and super focusing of waves. Slightly above, you can achieve a negative effective reflective index, and then you can make band gap opening at sub at subwavelength uh, at subwavelength regime. Okay. In the dil non dilute uh, regime, uh, this uh, effective medium theory is not standard one because we are going to homogenize to make effective medium theory for resonant structures. In the non-dilute regime, this cannot apply. So we have to develop something different. I will show you what we have been developing, this high frequency homogenization techniques. And uh, the same, the same, you get the same phenomena, but the mechanism is kind of different. You get super focusing slightly below some critical frequency, which is uh, 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 nothing to do with this free space resonant frequency. So the resonator will talk to each other they will interact, strongly interact. And then this uh, critical frequency is different from the uh, free space resonant frequency. Then uh, slightly below uh, this frequency, you have super focusing. Slightly above, you have uh, band gap opening. And as I said, this critical frequency is significantly different from free space resonant frequency. 
Okay, then uh, I will show you what we have been doing recently on this hybridization of arbitrary number of strongly interacting sub-wavelength resonator. Because to make this microstructure, either you take one resonator and you place it in, uh, uh, with some distribution, or you take two, three strongly, strongly or more strongly interacting, and then you repeat that, that structure uh, with some distribution. Okay. If you uh, do this, then there will be, uh, I, will, I will explain, there will be, uh, you need to compute uh, the new resonant frequency of this strongly interacting sub-wavelength resonator, and this is hybridization. So I will show you what we have been developing on singular hybridization method, and out of this, uh, we can construct double negative metamaterials with, uh, with, uh, or electromagnetic waves with both uh, uh, negative permittivity and uh, ne negative permeability, and for acoustics with both negative density and bulk modulus. And uh, uh, I will discuss uh, uh, broadband metamaterials out of this hybridization techniques. Okay, uh, this is a number of works uh, with uh, uh, with uh, uh, outstanding young young colleagues. So uh, all of this business we started when high uh, was at Econormal. This is the starting point. So, and from there, uh, Hai and I, we have been developing uh, this framework uh, for super resolution metamaterials uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, recently hybridization. Okay. So, uh, uh, I have been teaching this uh, at ETH, and uh, this is, uh, this is uh, our lecture notes. So, it's going to appear uh, soon. And all the codes uh, can be downloaded. Uh, actually, they can be downloaded on my web page, even the PDF file. Uh, but uh, the, the, when, when this will be published, uh, the codes will be downloaded at the, the AMS, uh, AMS web page. It's 500 pages, so our student at ETH today suffer. <laughs> Okay, so let me uh, now start uh, start uh, some mathematics. So as I said, uh, you have a green function, and this, uh, everything is related to the imaginary part of the green function. So the, sh the sharper is the imaginary part of the green function, the better is this resolution. This is a, this is a consequence of this uh, Kirchhoff-Helmholtz uh, identity. And uh, if you want uh, this imaginary part to have uh, sharp peaks, uh, then local resonant medium uh, should be used. Okay, this is one of the mechanisms. This is the mechanism we have been uh, thinking about. So, uh, how to explain this? It took us a, a, a long time. I will try to explain this uh, to, to properly. So, the mechanism of super resolution in resonant media is the following: you have your point source here. Okay, uh, it emits a wave. This wave will interact with this resonant structure. Uh, excites high modes. These high modes encode the information about the point source and which is completely non-trivial, they can propagate to the far field. As soon as they propagate to the far field, then you back propagate them and you, you achieve super resolution. And the resolution limit will be only limited by the size of the resonant structure and the signal to noise, ra to, um, signal -to -noise ratio in the data and no longer by the wavelength. So, uh, Let's consider a system of weakly coupled sub-wavelength resonators. Okay, so the size of super uh, size of the resonator will be delta, and it's much smaller than uh, the wavelength, which is two pi over k m. The, the distance between the resonators is of order the resonator size. Okay. So, mathematically speaking, what we do is we write an asymptotic expansion, or we derive an asymptotic expansion of the imaginary part of the green function in terms of, of delta. We write it like the imaginary part of the background solution, with the background medium without the resonator, plus another part which is exhibits sub-wavelength peaks with width of order the size of the resonator, so, so if order them. And doing so, we break the resolution limit. So our first example was, uh, was this. You have, uh, the, these are Helmholtz resonators. So uh, if you think about them, this is cavity, uh, this is uh, Laplacian, and with the Newman boundary condition, so uh, zero is an eigenvalue, uh, eigenvalue, and the eigenfunction is constant, right? Now you make a hole, uh, there, is, uh, there is a resonance in the complex plane, but so this is very close to zero. And this resonance is exactly what we are talking about. This is sub-wavelength resonance for, 
for, for helmocerazine. You take many of these helmocerazinators, this size is of order of the wavelength, you emit a wave here, uh, it will interact with the, 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 this structure, propagate, uh, then you send it back, and you see that, uh, and this is what, what uh, Matthias Fink and his group did, uh, you focalize uh, within, uh, uh, within one Coca-Cola site, Coca-Cola case. Okay? So you divide the resolution by, 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 by 10 and doing, uh, and doing this. Okay? So uh, the mechanism is exactly what I explained here. And uh, you compute the imaging part of the green function. X0 is here. Uh, uh, and uh, this is, of course, the imaging part of the medium without the resonators, plus some part which exhibits sub-wavelength uh, uh, sub uh, sub oscillation. Okay? So this guy here, if you have enough resonators, this guy here has, uh, has the, he's, I take uh, delta equal to, uh, delta is the size of uh, the resonator openings. Uh, these locations are ZG, and uh, G is the number of the resonator, and the frequency is of order O of square root. This is the regime when we can prove such a formula. The wavelength is then very large, it's one over square root of delta, and uh, this guy has a resolution of order one over square root of delta, over two, this is huge, and this one, uh, the resolution limit is one. So you achieve super resolution as soon as this term is significant with respect to uh, the, the, the limiting solution. Okay. So this mechanism applies also for, uh, for, uh, for plasmonic nanoparticles. So I will show you first what, what these plasmonic nanoparticles are. These are very small particles and much smaller than the wavelength of the light. And as you can see here, this is not numerics and this is not experimental, this is art. Uh, uh, published, uh, so that's cover of science uh, a few years ago. And uh, this, is, this, is, uh, this, is the, uh, this is the light, you can focalize it, and the focal spot here is of order the size of uh, one resonator. So what, uh, what these, uh, what these uh, particles are, plasmonic particles, they are all, always made by, from gold, they, they, because they, uh, and they accumulate selectively in tumor cells, they are biocompatible because they are made of gold and they have the reduced toxicity, you, you can detect them because uh, even though they are very small, uh, uh, they have a strong scattering, I will explain. And you can use them uh, for localized damage, for ab nano uh, ablation, if you like, uh, because they have a, a strong absorption. Okay. So how it looks? Uh, if D is my nanoparticle, uh, epsilon C is its uh, complex permittivity, Epsilon m is the permittivity of the background medium. Uh, I always take epsilon m is equal to one. And epsilon c, a uh, used model is the Drude model. Uh, and uh, it has to be causal, uh, then it has to verify the scrammer chronic relations. So the real part is, uh, is uh, obtained through Hilbert transform uh, of the imaginary part. And this is the model I'm going to use. You take G, the fundamental solution of the Laplacian. Single layer potential is convolution with the fundamental uh, solution. And I, I'm going to use this operator to characterize this resonant frequencies. So you can achieve this, uh, this strong scattering and strong absorption only at some frequencies, not for all the frequencies, only at some frequencies. These are the resonant frequencies I, I, I would like to characterize in terms of the spectrum of this operator. So this is called Newman-Poincaré operator or trace operator for in integral equation theory. So this is the convolution with the normal derivative of the green function. Okay. So here is the normal to the, to the boundary of the nanoparticle. So if the boundary is smooth, then uh, KD star is, is compact operator in L2. Because it's easy to prove that this spectrum lies in minus one half, one half. But uh, it's not self-adjoint operator. Uh, okay. It's self-adjoint only if D is a disk or a ball. Okay. So in order to uh, analyze its spectrum, uh, you, you need this symmetrization technique. It's not self-adjoint, but you can symmetrize. So you can make it by changing the scalar product, you can make it, uh, it self-adjoint. 
So uh, in three dimension, you can make it Hilbert. Uh, you can make it self-adjoint in, in this Hilbert space h minus one half equipped with uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, norm, which is uh, which involves the single layer potential. Okay, single layer potential is invertible in three dimensions, so you have no problem uh, in defining this in two dimension. Uh, it's a tricky because uh, single layer potential a little bit more tricky because single layer potential has a kernel, but kernel is for the of, of dimension one at most. And then you have to change the single layer potential to something else uh, and you can symmetrize the operator. So you can make KD star self-adjoint. And if you make it self-adjoint, then you have uh, uh, this spectral decomposition formula in this space, okay? Where the norm here is the new norm, okay? So lambda G are the eigenvalues of KD star. As I said, the spectrum is discrete. You can compute it for ellipses, and it's given by this, where A and B are the long and short axes. Uh, for ball, uh, you can compute it, uh, and it's given by 1 over 2, 2 G plus 1. And uh, for ellipses, the eigenvectors are elliptic harmonics, and for ball, this is spherical harmonics. In dimension 2, there is this twin property. If lambda G is an eigenvalue, then minus lambda G is an eigenvalue. But this is not true in three dimensions. The main point I'm going to use is this one. Right. Now, let, let me take this particle D. Right. It's with permittivity epsilon C, depending on omega. The background is permittivity 1. And I eliminate this particle with plane wave uh, U incident. Okay. Then uh, what we can prove, we can prove a uniform small volume expansion. The particle is much smaller than the wavelength. So we can prove that the scattered field is nothing else than it has this dipole form, dipolar form, polarization tensor or polarizability times the gradient of the green function at the location of the particle times the gradient of the incident field at the location plus, uh, plus some reminder. This reminder is of order to volume over the distance times delta. And this polarization tensor is going to be of order the volume over the distance. So this is much smaller than this one. The polarization tensor is defined in terms of this KD star by this formula. This is a very compact uh, definition of this polarization tensor. It's the inverse of lambda A minus uh, KD star uh, on U, the normal to this guy, multiplied by X. So this is matrix, right? Uh, the entries, uh, IG entries, you put I here and the G here. So this is the polarization tensor. As I said, the spectrum of KD star is between minus one half and one half. If lambda omega is outside the spectrum, this is invertible and this will not blow up, okay? If lambda omega hits one of the eigenvalues of this one, this will blow up, okay? So uh, we can use the spectral decomposition of this operator to write down uh, uh, the entries uh, in terms of the eigenfunctions and the eigenvalues of uh, the operate the Newman Poincare operator. And they have this form here. Now it's transparent. If lambda omega is very close to lambda g and these guys are non zero, then this guy blows up. So the, the resonant frequency at which you have very strong scattering and very strong absorption, I will show later, is the frequency for which the distance between lambda omega, so lambda uh, is uh, the uh, permittivity contrast the sum of the permittivities over two, the difference of the permittivities. Uh, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if this is very close to lambda g, uh, the omega for which the distance is minimal is, uh, is the quasi-static plasmonic, uh, plasmonic resonance. Okay? In order to have lambda omega smaller, uh, uh, real part smaller or, uh, than one half, or close, if you like, this is the same, close to uh, close to one of the eigenvalues of the Newman Poincare operator, you need epsilon c omega to have to be with real part negative. Otherwise, it's impossible. Okay. So this gold has a real part uh, per permittivity of the gold at some frequencies. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, real part is negative. Then this lambda omega is can be close to one of the eigenvalues of KD star. And if it's close, then there is a blow, uh, uh, blow up of the polarization tensor. And if there is a blow up of the polarization tensor, there is enhancement of the scattering. So we can, we can even derive uh, 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 bounds on this enhancement of the, 
the uh, scattering cross section. So the scattering cross section is defined by this average of the amplitude of the scattering amplitude uh, over uh, over uh, the scattering amplitude is defined by this, and then you integrate over one of the angles, and you get uh, they get uh, the scattering cross section. So there is enhancement because the scattering cross section is proportional to the trace of this polarization tensor. The trace of the polarization tensor blows up at uh, these frequencies. So there is uh, enhancement, uh, huge enhancement of uh, the scattering cross section, and we have this uh, this uh, this limit for it. Okay. You cannot do bad. Have a formula. Okay, sounds good. Now, if you have many particles, you do the same. You introduce this Newman Poincaré operator for many particles. Uh, it's defined by this, you symmetrize, and if you have many particles, the interesting case is when they are strongly interacting. So the behavior of the eigenvalues of this Newman Poincaré operator as the distance between the particles goes to zero is a challenging question. This is what I will try to, to show you. So here uh, we took two discs uh, with very separating uh, distance. And as you see, if they don't interact, there is only one uh, uh, plasmonic resonance, which is zero. Okay? A is equal to B, it's zero. And when they are interact, they are more and more. Actually, we can prove that there is infinite number of quasi-static plasmonic resonance. They are given by some formula for two nearly touching discs. And there is blow up of the electric field between the particles. And we have estimates for the blow up. The gradient of the, the field, which is the electric field, the gradient of the potential, is of order the, 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 the radius of the disk over, over the separating distance between the disks uh, times one over imaging part of lambda omega. This is in two dimensions. And this can, the singular behavior can be used. And it has, uh, it has many applications in nanosensing. This is two dimension case. Uh, what's going on in three dimension when there are spheres? When they are spheres, uh, we came out with uh, Sun Yun Yu, the fantastic uh, uh, young collaborator, came out with uh, this fully analytic solution for two plasmonic spheres, which cap capture analytically the singularity and the gap between the plasmonic spheres. And, we, and uh, if we have an arbitrary number of plasmonic spheres, we need an efficient, uh, efficient and accurate a scheme to compute uh, to compute this uh, this uh, this blow up uh, 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 of this of the electric field uh, uh, into these gaps. Yeah. So the key idea for deriving this is to connect the transformation optics and the method of image charges. So let me explain uh, the method of image charges first. You have a uniform incident field in this direction. You have two spheres here, and uh, the method of image charges is to write the solution as infinite series of image charges of strength UK, given by this, uh, at these location at ZK. Okay? If you look at what is 2 here, it's 1 over 2 lambda. Lambda was my permittivity contrast, was epsilon c plus 1 over 2 epsilon c minus 1, and 2 is 1 over 2 lambda. And for plasmonic spheres, uh, lambda is close to, uh, is, is smaller than 1 half. So this guy is larger than one. So this guy here will blow up. So this series here is not valid for plasmonic sphere because it does not converge. Okay. Now, what's transformation optics? Transformation optics introduce this uh, uh, this uh, I, I call it the transformation optics basis. This functions here out of the spherical harmonics, and you write the solution as this is the background field. This is the, the, the field you are sending. Easy. E0 is constant, Z is Z direction, times the sum of uh, uh, A n, some coefficient, uh, uh, the difference between these uh, two, uh, two TU uh, basis, basis functions. Okay? So uh, in order to compute the solution, so this is, this, is, this is exact, in order to compute the solution, you need to compute this A n, but this A n uh, they, are, they are satisfy, they satisfy uh, three diagonal system. Okay? So they are not explicit. So the steel solution, this one, is not fully analytic, and this one it does not converge. But you can convert the image charges into transformation optics solution using this formula here. And what you can prove, uh, this should be you, 
what you can prove? You can prove that if epsilon c is very large, it's negative, and it has to be very, and at plasmonic resonance, it's very large. If this is, this is always the case for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, plas uh, for plasmonic spheres at their plasmonic resonance, then we have this following approximation. We approximate the field by the background field plus the sum of some coefficients where now they are explicit. Some coefficients here, they are explicit, times this TU uh, basis functions, okay? So, and we, we have an approximate resonance condition which is given by this to, uh, I said what it is, and S uh, is defined somewhere here, okay? Uh, delta is the gap, uh, this, the gap here, and R is the, size, the radius of this. Sounds good? Now, we can have uh, eigenvalue estimates, lambda n uh, are between these two quantities, and uh, if delta goes to zero, you can see that uh, your spectrum, the spectrum of the Newman Poincare operator associated to these two spheres is, uh, is almost continuous. At the limiting case, when they touch each other, it's continuous. But because of some fundamental uh, uh, physical limitation, uh, this is known as no local effect, even in in the touching case, you cannot this gap distance, which is effectively non-zero. You cannot you cannot consider Maxwell's equations with two touching plasmonic spheres uh, with zero uh, uh, completely touching uh, touching spheres. You have to consider them with uh, with uh, with, uh, with gap distance, which is effectively non-zero. So you don't have continuous spectrum, but you have dense spectrum as the distance goes to zero. Okay, denser and denser. So this is the field enhancement using this formula, the formula here, uh, this approximate formula, uh, and comparing this with the exact solution. So exact solution is computed through integral equation method. And okay. uh, this is the absorption cross sections. Now, if you have many of these spheres, so the, many of these spheres interacting, and you want to, to repeat this structure in order to make a, a microstructure, okay, with, with interesting properties. So you need, you need to compute uh, the field uh, in one cell, and you want to compute this blow-up uh, of the field. So I didn't comment about something. Uh, yeah, this is the blow-up of the electric field in the gap at the plasmonic resonance. So the gradient of the solution uh, uh, of this La Laplace equation behaves in the gap, behaves like uh, O of delta over R3, to the power 3, 2, log, and as in the two-dimensional case, 1 over imaginary part of lambda omega. Okay. So what, uh, what, uh, what we developed is uh, something, uh, something we call the hybrid scheme, and it's modification of Chang and Green Greengard uh, hybrid scheme by replacing the image source series with their two versions, and this is, this is extremely fast uh, compared to the multiple expansion method. So let me explain this. So this is the Chang and Gringard's uh, method for comp computing, uh, uh, computing, uh, computing scattering by dielectric spheres. So this is, they, they combined multiple sources uh, with uh, the image source series. As I said, the image source series does not converge when the spheres are plasmonic. So this is the reason here. Uh, this two is, uh, is larger than one, uh, uh, then it blows up. So what we did, uh, for two spheres was uh, to combine, to replace this image source, uh, image, uh, this image uh, source series uh, by its, uh, its uh, two the transform, uh, transformation optics uh, version. So we combine as, uh, well, uh, as uh, it has been done by Chang and, uh, and the Green Guard, the multiple source, but not with the image source uh, series but with this uh, transformation optics type series, okay? And then you get uh, something which is much faster, because this is the hybrid method. You need uh, two harmonics in order to get accurate solution, uh, very accurate solution. If you use only the multiple expansion method, multiple expansion, you expand the densities here in terms of harmonic spherical, spherical harmonics. So you need, uh, in order to achieve uh, something comparable, you need more than L equal to 100 uh, harmonics or something. It's a huge, okay? Uh, 
uh, this is a uh, this is the exact solution. Exact is always num exactly exact in terms of numerics because there is no explicit solution in computer. And this is the analytical. Uh, this is the exact solution, real part, imaginary part, and this is the approximation of the real part and the imaginary part, and they look very similar. So this method, this hybrid method, capture the singularity between the spheres. Now you have many spheres. Very good. Uh, they, they are strongly interacting, excellent. But then you have to compute their plasmonic resonance. So if for two spheres we computed this, uh, then we have a formula here. We, uh, we have a condition, we compute it out of this approximate resonance condition. Okay? And we know uh, uh, how dense is the spectrum. Now, if you have many of them, you have to compute. And this could be very expensive. So we have developed, we have developed that the singular hybridization model for plasmas of strongly interacting many particles. The spheres uh, may have, uh, this is for arbitrary number of spheres, and they may have different uh, rates. Okay. So uh, what's the idea? The idea is everything is about this, uh, this, uh, this blow up of the field. Uh, everything is about the, the interaction of the sphere. So the field is, is confined, strongly confined here. Okay. So as a good approximation is uh, to uh, consider, uh, to consider uh, as a good approximation is to consider uh, the hybridization of this transformation optics modes, the singular modes here. Okay? If I, uh, I have a figure uh, later. Okay. Uh, uh, these two here, uh, everything is, can be described by uh, everything. Approximately can be described by their interaction in this gap. These by their interaction in this gap. Now I want to hybridize uh, uh, Compute, uh, compute the resonant frequency of these three spheres. I hybridize, I will, if you are not familiar, I will show you it's, it's, well, what does this mean. I just, comp I just uh, hybridize this mode and with, with this mode. Okay, okay so let me explain it again. Uh, this, uh, it combines uh, hybridization and uh, transformation optic approach. Uh, it provides simple and intuitive picture when the particles are close to touching. And uh, there is something which is interesting in this, uh, 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 in this, in this uh, singular hybridization model. It gives us uh, kind of insights into the relationship between the geometry and, uh, and the plasmas. How global and local information of the system uh, are encoded into the spectrum of the plasma. Okay, I, I, I will make it explicit. And it decomposes, actually, this model enables us to decompose the spectrum into singular and regularly shifted parts. Okay? The singular part is controlled by the local features of the geometry, and uh, the regular part is controlled by the global, uh, global, uh, global feature of the geometry. So, how, well, uh, let me maybe skip this first. How it works. So you compute, you compute this like a, like a dimer, like with, uh, what we did, okay? Just two spheres. You compute this like the two spheres. What you get, you get uh, uh, omega n t zero is the, the 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 frequency corresponding to this lambda n here. Two only two spheres, uh, only two spheres. Lambda n is a function of the frequency. Now I'm writing this everything in time in terms of the frequency. So you get this mode here. You get this, this, you get, you get this mode here, omega t n, and then in order to compute uh, the resonant frequency of this uh, trimer, this three, uh, you solve this coupled mode equation, which hi, which is uh, nothing else than the hybridization of this dimer plasmas. So delta n here is the coupling between the two transformation optics modes. Everything is based on the spectral theory of Newman Poincare operator. This one we know, we can compute. This one we can compute. And the resonant frequency of this uh, trimer is uh, the, this mode, uh, this, uh, this dimer mode, perturbed plus minus the coupling delta n. This is approximately the, the, what you get from the, this formula. And the mode, this is the frequency. And the corresponding mode is a just linear combination of uh, this dimer modes here. Uh, we, we call them uh, gap plasma modes. So the standard picture in this hybridization model is the following. You have many particles. Each particle 
has uh, has uh, uh, resonant frequency and uh, resonant mode. So the resonant mode of the trimerase is just a linear combination of the of the resonant mode of individual ones. It means that they don't interact much. Okay. If they interact, they are strongly interacting. What we did, what we proposed, is to take into account the interaction between these two. The interaction between these two hybridize this. Uh, these two interactions hybridize by solving this uh, by solving this coupled mode equation. This is the hybridization. So the, uh, there are two modes, and they separate. Okay. Okay. There is this mode will separate to omega n plus and omega n minus. Okay. And this omega n minus and omega n plus. So the 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 regular part, the regular part is delta n, and the regular part is is because of the global feature of the geometry. It depends on theta. These two, they don't interact. They, then they interact, but the interaction is, is, is weaker than the interaction between these two and these two. Okay? So the global feature is inside delta n. The local feature, which is this blow up of the field, is inside omega n t, t u. And, uh, uh, and, uh, 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 and because of the spectral theory of Newman Poincare operator, we can approximate the modes for this trimer as linear combination uh, between uh, this uh, hybridized, uh, be between, the, uh, between this, uh, the modes for the trimer as linear combination between this uh, dimer modes, or gap uh, plus modes. Okay, so as, as uh, this bending angle between the gap plasmon decreases, this, if this decreases, this delta n increases. Okay. De delta n is a kind of a global. If they don't see each other, it's a small. If they see each other, then it's, it's, it's getting larger and larger. Okay, this is, uh, this is computations of these hybrid modes. And we compute them, and we computed them by, by, by exact uh, numerical method, and uh, the, 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 we, we have similar values. Okay. So this, uh, this picture uh, captured uh, uh, the essential of, uh, of what's going on there. Now, uh, as an application. So when you get, uh, when you get, uh, uh, when you get a delta smaller, you get denser and denser. When you get uh, many of them, uh, uh, you get hybridized, many hybridized frequencies. So you get a denser and denser spectrum of the human point So the, the now, uh, what we want to do with this? Uh, we want to do uh, broadband metasurfaces. So le le let me explain what uh, a very simple case. Uh, just, uh, so you take, uh, you take uh, uh, periodically distributed plasmonic nanoparticles here. You, you mount this on, on, on a plate. Uh, let's make it uh, perfectly conducting. U equals zero, but we can change, the, you change the, 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 the boundary condition here and derive similar uh, effective boundary condition. So you take u equals zero here, you have plasmonic particles here, you eliminate them, and you want to compute the solution in the far field. So the solution in the far field is approximated by, uh, uh, by the solution obtained by solving Helmholtz equation without, or Maxwell's equation, without this uh, plasmonic particles, but with different boundary condition. This is effective boundary condition. So you replace everything, you place this thin layer, of plasmonic particles by an effective boundary condition, and you get uh, approximately the right solution. This effective boundary condition uh, uh, is uh, there is impedance here, which depends on the frequencies. And you can compute the spectral decomposition of this impedance, and it's given by this one. If lambda omega is touching one of this lambda g, the CZ is very large, so you switch directly boundary condition to Newman boundary condition at some frequencies. Now, if you want this effect to be broadband, means that you want lambda g to be very dense. You, you need many of these lambda g, okay, in order to hit them. Okay, so you need many of this. So how to do it? So uh, you, you you should hybridize uh, structures, okay, and using this uh, this uh, this what I just uh, I showed the the singular uh, singular hybridization scheme. So you take plasmonic particles. You put, you need, you, here, uh, there was some separating distance. But you take two of them, and then you repeat this two periodically. Uh, you will get a denser spectrum than having only one repeated periodically. 
you get the three, you, you get denser spectrum because of the hybridization. Every eigenvalue will be split uh, into, uh, into other eigenvalues. Two, three, four, five, five uh, okay. Uh, uh, then uh, you want to design the structure in such a way you have the, uh, the, the largest broadband effect. And uh, this, uh, this is what we have been trying. So, we have been, so you take uh, this plasmonic particles, there is separating distance here. You take another plasmonic uh, particle here with separating distance. These are two small parameters. And you have this angle here, this bonding angle. And add, as I said, if this one is uh, small, then uh, you have a uh, denser spectrum. This is was uh, for the case of uh, trimer. So this is kind of trimer repeated periodically. This is uh, this is uh, this is uh, the, you get denser spectrum. Okay. Now, uh, if you put this theta uh, 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 to be pi over two, the sim the, there is a lot of symmetry. If there is a lot of symmetry, there is a lot of degeneracy. So your spectrum is less dense. So it ha you have to. Uh, uh, you have to design structure which are not symmetric. And this one looks like a, like, like, a, like a good one. OK, uh, now maybe I skip this part. Uh, now let me show you in this last 10 minutes uh, the, what we did in many, many art uh, resonance bubbles. So the first one was plasmonic. So this was about uh, photonics. Now let me show you something about uh, acoustics. So these bubbles are, uh, are spherical gas bubbles uh, which oscillate. Actually, it's, they could be non-spherical if they are in some gel. And I will show you how to compute their resonant frequency. And they, ha and they are sub-wavelength resonators. Means they are they're associ associated wavelength uh, is several order of magnitude larger than the bubble size. They oscillate at some frequencies which is several order of magnitude larger. Okay? And as for, as for plasmonic particles, they are very strong scatter. Okay. So mathematically speaking, this is Helmholtz equation inside the bubble, a Helmholtz equation outside the, the bubble, inside, outside, with this transmission conditions. Here, uh, rho are the densities, kappa are the bulk model, and we need this uh, high contrast region. Okay. This, is, this is a physical one. Delta is the contrast between the densities uh, of uh, air and, and the bubble. And this is uh, this uh, uh, density between bubble and air, and this is supposed to be much smaller than one. And the the contrast between the bulk model is a further one. Okay. So you can compute as a, as for plasmonic particles. Uh, we computed, we characterized the plasmonic resonance in terms of uh, uh, in terms of the spectrum of the Newman Poincaré operator. Here we have a formula for this many art resonance. Many art resonance that can be written in terms uh, of the capacity of, uh, of the bubble, the volume of the bubble, real part is order square root of delta, delta this, uh, this high contrast here, and, uh, and imaginary part is of order delta times, uh, times this. So the capacity, think about it like this uh, single layer potential minus one of one, uh, integrated average on, on the bottom. And these bubbles are, uh, as you remember, these plasmonic particles are dipoles. And they are strong uh, uh, dipole scatters at their plasmonic resonance. The bubbles are monopoles. And uh, uh, monopoles means that uh, this is a, uh, some function of the frequency times the green function. Dipoles is some polarization tensor, some matrix times the gradient of, uh, of the green function. And this is scattering coefficient uh, is the capacity over 1 minus omega m over omega 2 uh, plus some imaginary part. We have a formula for this imaginary part here. Uh, like like this one, as omega goes uh, is a sm close to omega m, uh, the g is is very large. So the, your scattering is very large. So this is a, this is a very strong scatter at or near the many art resonance. Now uh, skip this. Now you make many of these bubbles in the dilute regime. What you can see slightly below the many art resonance frequency uh, with large number of bubbles acts as an effective medium with high reflective index. And then you have the super focus. You can prove, I will show you the formula. You have the super focus. You put in, uh, in a domain which of size one wavelength, you put many of these bubbles, dilute regime, their volume fraction is small. And even if their volume fraction is small, when you uh, illuminate point source inside and you record the wave 
uh, away from uh, from this bubbly, bubbly medium, you time reverse, you will focalize uh, on the point source with the resolution of order uh, the bubble size and not the wavelength. Uh, why this is uh, this is uh, this is uh, this is the truth? Uh, this is what uh, what uh, what I uh, derived. Uh, the, your bubbly medium uh, uh, is described by this effective operator. It's not uh, any longer Helmholtz equation, but it's Helmholtz equation with some potential, which is decomposed into three parts. This one blows up if omega is close to omega m. This one it depends on it depends only on the size and the number of the bubbles, and this one depends only on the distribution of the centers of the bubbles. Of course, under many conditions. Slightly below the resonant frequency, you see that this V is very high. So this is high contrast reflective index. Slightly above, this is uh, this is very high but negative. So uh, there is a damping of the wind. Uh, there is this kind of uh, uh, out of this, we will construct uh, photonic crystals, uh, and we will uh, we'll show you this band cap, uh, uh, subwavelength band cap. Okay, so this effective medium theory does not hold uh, 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 at this uh, exactly at this frequency, because every bubble response is of order one. So you move one, uh, you change the limit. So it cannot convert to anything. Okay, so what's the mechanism of this focusing in high contrast media? Uh, mixing of resonant modes. This is intrinsic nature of any non-Hermitian system. If you hit one of these eigenvalues, uh, then you get this, this structure. So you put many of these bubbles, and you compute their green function. The green function of the free space is this one. Uh, I zoomed out everything. And the green function of this bubbly media is this one. And you, need, you see here how enhanced is the resolution. Okay. So there is mixing of resonant modes because, because this is non-Hermitian systems. And then sub-wavelength resonance modes, uh, uh, if, they are, if they are excited, they dominate over the other ones in the expansion of the green function. The imaginary part of the green function may have sharper peak than the one of the, of the free space due to this excited sub-wavelength resonant modes. And this sub-wavelength resonant modes, they determine the super resolution. But this is very sensitive because you have to hit one of these uh, eigenvalues, unless you send a broadband signal. And you are sure that some resonance are there. Otherwise, you cannot issue. It's, it's not robust. Uh, okay. Now, uh, you, put, uh, you make uh, now, uh, instead of a kind of uh, arbitrary distribution, you make it like a crystal. This bubbles, you make a crystal. Uh, you make a crystal of bubbles. And what you can prove, you can prove that there is a band gap. This band gap is sub-wavelength. So this crystals of bubble uh, uh, can prohibit waves with low frequency from propagating. It's great. And the maximum uh, is attained at this M point. OK? So in the dilute regime, let me explain it here. For very in the dilute regime, this is the picture. In the, uh, uh, the non-dilute regime, you have a similar picture. Now, what we, what we proved, what we people observed, and what we proved is the following. If you, uh, if you are here, you eliminate with some frequency here, then you will achieve, uh, you will achieve super focusing, whatever is the regime. The explanation is different. High frequency, uh, uh, strong, uh, non-dilute regime and dilute regime have completely different explanation, completely different nature. What you observe, you per super resolution here, and you, you observe here uh, this, double, uh, this negative material, because you are in the band camp. Okay? The explanation for the dilute regime is this one. It's easy, effective medium theory. The explanation for the non-dilute regime is more and more involved. So what, what we more and more involved, so you have to work on this uh, block eigenfunction, eigenvalues, and so on, uh, eigenfunction and uh, eigenvalues. And what we can prove, we can prove that around this point, the point M, with corresponding to periodicity pi pi, around this point, the wave, the block mode, behaves like plane wave, which satisfies this homogenized equation times some oscillating function. So, if this wave is propagating, then you have super resolution because this guy is highly oscillating. 
If this wave is not propagating, you have negative material. Okay. So keep in mind that, that, uh, that this, is, uh, this is one of the points uh, I want to uh, emphasize. Uh, debut regime and non-debut regime, uh, uh, the mathematics is completely different. At the end of the day, the physics, the observed phenomena is the same, but the explanation is not the same. Okay. And we did this. Now, uh, of course, when you have a crystal, you want to make, uh, to, to, to make, uh, to make, uh, 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 localized modes, defect modes. So how to do this? Uh, you want uh, to trap acoustic waves with, uh, uh, with, freak with wavelengths much larger than the size of the defect. It looks like impossible. But in this sub-wavelength band gap, you can achieve this with bubbles. So you take these bubbles, okay? You take these bubbles and you increase the radius of one bubble from R to R plus epsilon. And to create a detuned resonator with a resonance which is in the band gap. If you can do this, then you are done. And you have a formula for this. The eigenvalue created when you change the radius of one bubble minus the omega star. Omega star is the highest eigenvalue. This, the, this, egg, this eigenvalue where everything is, is uh, uh, every, all of this physics is, is, uh, is there. The interesting phenomena are there. Is, uh, is given by this formula. So this guy is larger than this guy. Okay. So you create, this is the band gap. This is the band gap, I zoom. And this is the mode. And this is the band gap here. Uh, here, this is some sub wavelength band gap. And here is the defect mode. So the defect mode is inside the band gap. Means that the wave is trapped. If you create wave there, it's trapped by the structure. Even though it's, uh, it's, uh, it's with wavelength much larger. Okay, now uh, one minute for, for the dimer. So you can make here uh, whatever you want. It depends on the effect you want to, 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 to issue. If you make a dimer, why you want to make a dimer? Because, uh, 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 because uh, look at this. So with bubbles, uh, we were able to change uh, uh, the this, this zero order term of this equation. We have an effective zero order term. And we made it negative for some frequencies, for frequencies uh, uh, above this uh, critical frequency omega star, the one uh, achieved at, uh, uh, at the point pi pi, okay? The maximum of, uh, uh, the, maximum of the first, uh, first uh, continuous part of the spectrum. Now, you want to make double negative. Uh, this guy, you make it negative with monopoles, it's enough. Zero order term, you change it with monopoles. If you want to change higher order terms, you need dipoles. Okay, otherwise you cannot do it. If you take one bubble, you can never achieve two uh, uh, double negative material. Here, divergence of something negative gradient plus something negative. It, it's impossible. Okay, so in order to achieve this, you have to make a di dimer. And for dimers, so two bubbles, uh, you can prove that uh, there are two resonant frequencies. This is hybridization. This is exactly hybridization. This is strongly interacting uh, regime. So formula are, are in terms of some capacities. Uh, now, for one bubble, it was the capacity of the bubble. For two bubbles, there is a matrix, uh, capacity matrix. And, uh, uh, and these hybridized modes are in terms of the entries of this capacity matrix. This could be for, for, for shape is, is, is not, uh, this is general shape, whatever. It simplifies if you take, uh, you take spheres or, or this. These are hybridized modes, but more importantly, the field is, uh, is the sum of a monopole times the scattering coefficient, which is much enhanced, and a dipole, which, uh, uh, which has uh, this, uh, this polarization here, polarization tensor, which is given by this one and could be very much enhanced. And you could, because omega, these hybridized modes are close to each other, you can excite both of them, and you can make both of the effective materials for this, my, for this structure, so I'm considering this one. I, I said there is two hybridized frequencies, and the approximation of this, two, of this dimer is a dipole plus monopole, and I can make both of them resonant for some frequencies because these hybridized frequencies are close to each other. Now, if I, can, if I make a microstructure, what's the effective material parameters of the, this microstructure? The dilute regime, I can do it, we can do it. We did it, actually. And uh, you can prove that uh, this is the effective equation. 
and this guy here and this guy here for some frequencies can be uh, can be much larger than than identity and much larger than k2 so we can tune this to be negative at some frequencies so this is the experiment this is the numerical results and for these frequencies here you can make both the density and the bulk uh, modulus negative the effective one for this microstructure sounds good now it's 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 very narrow so if you want it to win, you want to make it uh, broader uh, you need to think about uh, uh, what kind of structure you should you should it's not dimer not two bubbles last and then i will conclude uh, take this dimer and you make a crystal out of it you compute the the, the band gap uh, the the block uh, curves and you see that they are now two uh, there are two uh, two band gaps of course one associated basically it's, it's, it's roughly speaking, it's not the true mathematical picture. One associated to the uh, monopoles and one associated to the, the dipoles. So this is dimer. Okay, you have two, so you create. They can touch each other, but the, never you get this uh, direct singularity. You get this direct singularity because of the degeneracy of some symmetry. So you need this honeycomb structure, and as you can see here, you get this direct uh, direct singularity at uh, subboid length scales. You can prove it, and this is what, what we aim at. Uh, you can prove that this, at this point here, K, K point, uh, the, the first block again frequency is of multiplicity 2, and uh, the first band and the second band form a direct code, means that uh, uh, the, they behave uh, like this, in terms of alpha, uh, uh, when alpha is close to alpha star. Here. They behave like this. And then you conclude that you have this direct singularity at alpha equal to alpha star. So let me conclude. Uh, so this sub-wavelength resonance are fascinating subject, right? It's, it's, it's unbelievable. So we started this, we started this when, when High was at Econ Normal. And uh, since, the, since, uh, since uh, then we really enjoyed, we really enjoyed. Yeah. And uh, mathematically speaking, because you think about this, yeah, we have time to think about things, so we can, can, can unify them and, uh, and clarify the pictures. So, so. And uh, uh, what really we suffered about is uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this. So if you look at, uh, at this effective medium theory, it's used everywhere, and is it for every region, uh, which is kind of, uh, kind of, uh, kind of, uh, it gave us a hard time to figure out uh, why these phenomena are true, uh, even though we are not in the right region. So we have to develop some new mathematical tools and explanation. Of course, you can make, uh, as, I, uh, as I said, the sub-wavelength cavities, topological properties at sub-wavelength scales. And now I think we are, and I hope we are prepared for uh, kind of optimal design methodologies, because uh, now we have a better picture of what's going on. So we can do some, some optimal a design in very robust way and uh, in very clear way. We understand what, uh, what's going on. I hope you like it. Uh, thank you very much. So, any questions? Yeah, it's uh, very impressive that uh, you can obtain the uh, fast conversion solution to the 3D <laughs> plasmonic sphere. And that has been a very classical problem. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm wondering, you know, near the uh, touching regime, yeah. uh, what's the behavior of the energy, electrical energy? Uh, so we look at the field. Uh, so the field is gradient, the electric field is gradient to the potential. Yeah, okay, so there is something, so this is for, for the quasi-static approximation. So we have to include uh, this uh, retardation effect. This is a, this is ongoing project. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. Uh, it's not easy at all. This, at the quasi-static uh, regime, we have a formula for the gradient of the potential. So we can compute we can compute any quantity out of it uh, in the gap uh, in the gap between these two. I'm interested in integrated energy. Integrated energy, I uh, don't know. I have, I, I, we never looked at it. We looked at this uh, point-wise approximation of the field. 
And the gap pointwise approximation of the field, it blows up and you have to Any other question? I mean, guess is most of the energy is, is confined there, uh, right? Uh, yeah. Most of the energy is confined there, but we don't have estimates for it. Yeah, it's interesting if you can bound it. Yeah, it's, uh, we can have the bounds on it. But most of the energy is confined there. Yeah. Then we have to look carefully and to try to estimate. But we have a formula for the solution for, for, for the field. Any other questions? So, if no, uh, let's thank the speaker again and conclude with this.